Okay, so um, back for round two. Uh, I thought I'd, I'd need to wait uh, three more minutes, so I'm not sure what the deal was, uh, but I uh, just saw Kenny Son Solomon, uh, the, I think the top rated player, needing to qualify for this tournament uh, to play for the South African team. Uh, he's in Italy at the moment. Um, our first ever Grandmaster from South Africa. And... Uh, well, he is playing against Jacob and Gunyavir, and they've started the game with 2 minutes to 10. So, I guess uh, the round just starts kind of when they want to start. So, if I want to make a break, I can't rely on them starting on time. Um, but uh, this time around, I'm, at least, I put all the tabs open of the open section as well as the under-20 section. Uh, the female section um, is just going to be too, too many tabs now. Um, and well, I also I also really want to follow it. Um, my computer will definitely crash, so I need to commit to two sections. I think at most, and uh, I think these are the, the toughest two sections. But we'll definitely take a look at at how the the results come in and um, in the female section as well. We'll we'll be following that. It's only round one, so it's it's really tricky to say, you know, who looks good in both sections. Um, while we let Kenny and uh, Jacob just uh, play out uh, some moves, let's see, Panda Bird and Trophy Master. This is now in the under twenty section. They've also started their game a minute early, so I don't know if this is going to be a trend. Um, actually, let's just quickly show you guys the. Uh, results so far in the open section, Bromos playing now against wasn't easy, we had a buy in the first round and only one point so far but the sneaky weasel that took down Steenkamp and Marcia had a good game, Holy Cornholio, I don't know who, who this is, uh, I'm thinking any other account that doesn't have a name yet or some kind of provisional rating, I think it's supposed to be Henry Steele but some trying to still figure out who Henry Steele is, I don't know if Henry Steele is Lupus full man made a draw there in the first round uh, but we'll figure it out soon Mr. Duji hasn't in the game yet Masia not yet Lupusful men I think I was saying this is uh, the, the big chance no, no Lupusful men is not Henry Steele that guy plays 2500 blitz in any case Masia's in his game. Steenkamp's game has also started against Supremacy Blitz. Um, and has he played the English? Yep, he has. He's been uh, using the English in high-level uh, classic tournaments now for a while. And trust me, this uh, Steenkamp's theory on, well, on the English is, is really great. So I think he's, he, we might see some fireworks in this game. Let's see who else is. Holy Cornholio. This is maybe... This I was thinking was uh, Cordry, maybe. So there's one Cordry account and one Henry Steele account that's still a bit mysterious. The Sneaky Weasel isn't one of them. We've got too many ratings for the time being. Actually, I should just check the list and try and guess who's who. And it can be that uh, not everyone accepted... Um, to play in the tournament because I mean uh, the names like Watu Kubisi and uh, Johannes Mabusela Donovan van der Jerfer uh, I'm seeing all of their names now on invited players list so I'm not sure who the accepted players are Charles de Villiers uh, so definitely definitely not everyone accepted the invitation even though there's five grand on the line I highly doubt, I highly doubt uh, the people declining the invitation would be the strongest players as they, they stand the biggest chance to get that, that money. Five grand for each section, that's a lot of pressure on these games. Holy Cornholio now. Uh, don't know who you are, I think maybe, maybe you Cordry. Uh, you, with no other ratings, I'm thinking this is Cordry's account. Could maybe phone him just in between here if he's playing. Okay, um, looks fine to me so far. Nothing too bad. 
And here we actually have a big pairing, uh, Roberto Dabrio against Matt Pond. And Matt did lose his first game. So uh, I think he, he he's playing against his big friend over here, uh, Mr. Roberto Dabrio. Um, but I think he, he's not going to care about the friendship after this game. There's a lot of money on the line. And if you can beat your buddy, then, then so be it. Same with the Banele and Vusi in the previous round. Banele just taking that free rook. This game started first. It's Jacob Guni versus uh, uh, Kenny Solomon. Grandma's of Kenny Solomon. And Guni's position looks really fine. Uh, White needs to figure stuff out on the queen side. Uh, for instance, allowing a3 and moving the bishop could result in some kind of discovery, picking up a pawn and going for the undefended rook. So you need to really consider how strong you want this bishop to be uh, along this diagonal with all these pawns just supporting it along its way. So big question over here for um, Kenny Solomon. Okay, this is now the under 20 section. This game also started quickly. Uh, Panda Bird, um, Trophy Master, not sure who, who they are. We'll come back to this game. Keegan Chang playing against my friend Chess King Mark. And Mark's got the black side of a Sicilian, I guess. Played the quick Sicilian. I myself opt for g3, h3 is also nice, and Mark's not looking too bad. Yet again, a beautiful bishop along this diagonal. This one's slightly hampered, but the pawn does a great job of making uh, the e7 pawn very awkward. So, the guy that wins against, uh, this is Devon Smith against Michael Simpson. Uh, I think they're roughly the same age. Michael might be... No, Devon is slightly younger. Um, in any case, uh, both of them, they're fantastic players. In the under-20 under section. And... Well, we'll need to see how things pan out first. But Michael is planning to put the bishop on c6. And black seems fine. Um, King is actually kind of slightly awkward maybe f5 is, is an idea to uh, try and get a kingside attack going before your king is too exposed but even then i'm thinking black is fine with just trading and playing bishop c6 playing with this isolated pawn claiming your king is very awkward so maybe let's give a slight advantage here to black because it's not clear how white is dealing with a lot of these things okay so g4 i think okay maybe let's keep uh, refrain from giving an evaluation first because uh, White now realizes he, he might be in some trouble with his exposed king unless he counterattacks and counterattacks immediately. Panele. One of these players needs to be Daniel Barish unless he also declined to play. I just don't see how you decline so much money. Um, <laughs> maybe it's just because I'm a student and can't make that money ever. It's one of the things I'm busy with. So... Okay, Crazy Castle 05. No other ratings except a weird blitz rating. Can we maybe claim that this is Daniel Barish? Can we maybe claim it? Feels like the strongest players have gone un under pseudonyms or uh, names that. New, new usernames on DHS just to keep their anonymity. And who's this? The South African elephant. So many South African uh, animals. Okay. Uh, the chat is saying that Banele is too much, but I don't know. Black is getting completely sword slaughtered over here. Uh, G6, uh, kick the knight away. Knight retreat, can't retreat. Okay, maybe this is very bad for Black. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Reconsidering that this is Daniel Barish. Let's uh, see where that goes. And key, uh, wait, this is Kanya. Playing against Vusi Muzi. These frames are taking on each other today. And Vusi has uh, managed 
Actually, pretty safe position. Maybe White's King is slightly weak. He can start rolling these queenside pawns. The Wolf, I was going to say, is in his first game and he's playing against David Gluckman. He had the, the bye the previous round, so this is game one for him on this tournament. Against David Gluckman, uh, or Paul, no, sorry, it's Paul Gluckman, the, the son, and... Um, yeah, Floppy the dog doesn't play around. We've seen we've seen that a few times in the uh, Vieppia, uh Western Province team uh, the team battles I think for the clubs. This is going to be a very tough game in the under twenty section. A very good pairing. So let's uh, go back. I'm as I was going through, I realized I'm still a bit fascinated to see how Stienkamp's position panned out. Playing against Supremacy Blitz. And I don't know if I'm incorrect in saying that Supremacy Blitz is from the Western Cape. Okay. I wonder, is Knight E4 such a nice find? Maybe. Stenkamp is now playing with uh, an isolated D-pawn. Uh, as uh, Roberto was in the previous game. And this move might actually be very nice, because if you trade, this Knight simply enters... The eyes of the bishop is open. The queen is under attack for now. Siankam possibly has this one d7 weakness he can play with. But uh, we'll let him manage this position. Fortunately, we don't need to play it. <laughs> Duji is not in the game, I'm not sure. He withdrew from the tournament. Peaceful warrior. Okay, this is also open section stuff. Craig Willenberg. And... Looks like the peaceful warrior is in a relatively peaceful position. He only needs to worry about the majority, which uh, black or white has. So he's got some space himself. Uh, but these games aren't too explosive. The, the people are playing a relatively fine chess. Um, Masia is now in a game against Lupus for men, and this player, it's either Henry. No, I was saying it's no, it's it's no one we know, I I know. <laughs> It's not Henry or um, uh, Daniel. So, is it lupus for men that just took down? No, wait. It's I think it's Holy Cornholio that took down. Um, wait, we can actually see it over here. Uh, lupus for men drew against supremacy blitz. So, Holy Cornholio took down. A Nachi, Matt Pont. So that's probably either Henry or uh, Daniel. And then I also think, well, the only other account that maybe has got some anonymity towards it um, is Hakia, who drew against Kenny Willenberg. So let's maybe see what uh, Hakia is up to. He might be in a, in a buy. Uh, I don't get it. Some people, some people get buys in some rounds. So he's not he's not playing a game now, is he? Akia. He's playing against Mr. Duji, but Mr. Duji, wait, he hasn't hasn't been online all day. Let's just search for Akia. This is one pairing I, I've been. So Akia has has got this uh, one draw against Kenny uh, Willenberg. So, played one rapid game, one draw. He's not in the pairing again. Maybe his opponent withdrew. So that's just a second buy for everyone. Uh, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, Craig Willenberg against Peaceful Warrior. We've got Lupus for Men, who's not one of the mysterious players. I'm thinking Hakia is one of them. Wait, let's just check the Hakia account. Nope, not one of the mysterious players. So either Cordry or Henry Steele are not playing. One of them are playing on uh, the Holy Cornholio account. This is now the only account I suspect of being very a, a very strong South African player. Um, but looking at the position, I'm not too sure if Holy Cornholio is too happy. We'll see. We'll see. But the same with the game against Matt Pond. I wasn't sure if Holy Cornholio actually had an advantage um, 
but then the game was suddenly over. So we'll see here. Maybe maybe uh, White just leaves the Queens, plays Rook E1, claims there's no pushing this pawn forward. Uh, if there's a trade, my Rook becomes active and stuff like that. Okay. Holy Cornolio. Maybe no, he did trade the pawn. Enochi and uh, Matt. <laughs> Enochi and Matt Pond. Matt Pond versus Roberto in this game. I was saying my pawn is not going to feel any mercy for his friend. But look at his friend. No mercy for him too. And we know generally that that pawn is fine with keeping his king in the center. Let's see Let's see if it uh, works out for him so well today. Rebatu has uh, shoved these four pawns forward. And says, I'm, I'm coming to get you. Uh, and we have this game, which seems like Kenny Solomon has defended quite well. I, I wasn't too happy about his prospects, I think, right over here. So he traded the pawn. And then set up to trade another one of those pawns. And suddenly it starts looking fine for him. Yeah, this looks quite fine. Maybe, maybe, um... Maybe Black didn't need to... Black uh, needed to go queen takes. Well, wonder recapturing like this drops a queen. So is there someone in the comment section that's kind of confused? <laughs> but uh, this is a good um, this is a good game Kenny has resolved the, the, the queen side tension a bit, those pawns, and I think he's going to be pushing for the win soon. Um, so when you give him some momentum, it's, uh, it's, gonna be, it's pretty bad. So I think one of the ideas he has is that he'd, he'd just like to trade down queen and rook, and then play with this spatial advantage in the end game. Okay, maybe I, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't commentate stuff like he's going to play for the win. Uh, I think he's just not as passive anymore, so we will be expecting uh, more aggressive moves soon. Steenkamp, what's happening over here? Supremacy Blitz had that great knight d5 find, uh, which seemed to make Steenkamp's position very awkward. So Steenkamp traded, went queen b5, and took a pawn. Playing a pawn up, uh, giving the pawn back again. Well, I think it was kind of forced. All the way throughout, the pawn would have dropped back. But Stenkamp is now very happy. Queen and Rook can't be challenged. And this bishop is a great bishop. So, a5 makes a lot of sense. We can maybe expect a Rook c6. Uh, with the idea of maybe... Or just simply g3. He says, don't push that pawn. I'm defending it three times. I'll just do something I want to do before I start attacking. Steenkamp over there. Holy Cornholio, this is this is my the player I expect as an as an IM. Um, 
Okay, but uh, we'll <laughs> we'll see whether I'm correct uh, later about the identity. Meanwhile, uh, Matt Ponner has just gone Queen C5, attacking this knight twice, and this move has been played. So Matt Ponner still Mount Castle, still having to stare at these four pawns. And Kenny Solomon, these dark squared uh, bishops have uh, been traded off, and. Joseph Mwale in the chat. Kenny, I expect, might not be too better in the endgame too. Uh, it's, uh, two knights in this type of position might actually even be better. So I think Kenny's considering whether to trade down queens or not. Oh, someone's making a point over here. Milan77 says that the players are playing in Zen mode. So there is a mode you can play uh, where um, uh, where you maybe open the lead chess TV of yourself and check the other tab the whole time. But uh, trust me, they uh, these players will just be wasting their time if they're looking at our comments on their moves. <laughs> so I think even if they really wanted to, they'd, they'd just be wasting their time. Panda Bird 1, we're back to the under 20 section here. This game, I'm not sure who these guys are, but a trophy master can always apply some pressure on C2, which looks pretty fun. That's crazy. How did I nearly use up a gig just by watching chess? That's crazy. That's weird. <laughs> okay, that's just strange. Hopefully the internet holds up today. Mm. Keegan Chang, uh, Chess King Mark. Whoopsie. We have a tricky opponent over here, Chess King Mark. We said his uh, Sicilian looked fine early on. And well, Mark has allowed his position to digress a bit. But then Keegan went for Ooh, Keegan was trying to double, but I think he missed 95. And then we got a position like this. Okay. Wait a minute. Is Mark's knight trapped? Why did he need to play? Oh, F5. Nice find. Rook takes, rook takes. So playing in this intermezzo move, Mark can find these sneaky ideas always. Um, he doesn't simply blunder. But it's still three pawns for a knight, still a long way to go for Mark. And most of these pawns are really well protected. You need to start at the base if you want to get to any of them. So he might just play f4, try and get the rooks in. f4 seems very nice. f4 immediately. f4 and pawn takes just the rook f8, rook g8. And you're threatening mate, so... If the pawn doesn't take, uh, what else can black play? Attack the knight? Oh, okay, so maybe don't play f4 immediately. Still the point is that if the rook moves, you can capture the the, um, the other rook. So the rook is defending the rook by, by um, skewering it. And that's that's still the point. Something like this. I'm, I don't know what is Mark's idea exactly. Oh, I think the idea is pretty cool. So you can actually just leave your knight there undefended. Um, play something like f4 then. So he's actually just prepping f4. Maybe. I don't know. Seems very promising for Mark. I'm very glad for him. Uh, being invited. I don't think his rating was high enough to be invited. Technically, but uh, he had a growth of about two, three hundred points just before the lockdown. So I think uh, provisionally they, they invited him because of that. But maybe the under 20 section, it's got a lower rating cap uh, to be invited or something. And this is Michael Simpson versus the guy that wins, Devin Smith. And Devin went G4 uh, in a position that uh, seemed like 
f5 and stuff would start losing to bishop c6 so g4 the aggressive option bishop c6 in any case and queen g4 and suddenly white is the one calling the shots and duh Th don't be alarmed to see f6 now the pawn can't be traded um because of mate but Knight f6 would have been the much juicier option. The pawn takes uh, and the king moves mate, except that the queen is pinned in that line. So definitely expecting some kind of advance here. Bishop f4. What's that about? Okay. No clue. And this is the position they are at at the moment. Banela has already mated Crazy Castle and... So Crazy Castle is definitely not an anonymous uh, Daniel Barish. Whoa. And Banel is mad. That is such a cool line. That is such a cool sacrifice. Um, obviously, if it's not taken, you're just up a great pawn. And when it's taken, you only need to find Queenie takes e6. And mate in one is covered. So, and mate, great, great stuff. Great stuff by Banele. And Kanya playing against uh, his teammate and friend, uh, Urusi. And we saw this position where Kanya was being attacked on the king side with a very exposed king. And this is where we are at at the moment. Urusi using a lot of time, but with a superior position. Maybe the rook on the 7th is something to worry about, but uh, maybe it doesn't stay there for too long. Uh, if rooks are traded, I think this is what white should opt for. Maybe black goes knight takes, king takes, bishop check, something, I don't know. In any case, uh, interesting move by Kanya. Interesting. He had to calculate uh, that there are no tactics. And Rusi's going to use more time now, so maybe it was a, a tricky move to find. But great in the sense that it's going to be burning some time. What has the wolf been up to? He's won the exchange. He's playing against David Gluckman in this round. Um, tricky opponent. And we left the game. You're saying theory. I don't know if this is theory anymore, but whoa. Okay, stuff became pretty real here. H4 walking into this uh, bishop b4 pin, but then first into meso check queen moves, and uh, Keith took that bishop, which uh, he realized he he did need to recapture, which Black realized we'd need to be captured um, instead of going for this. But I, I don't know what's the big deal so taking first and then lose okay so let's just throw the arrows in the correct sequence so uh, you've got an intermezzo check and whatever i mean the king probably moves to h1 that's necessary and then queen takes and you've still got the what do you have now materially you've got a knight and bishop and rook versus two rooks uh, but one of the main points, I guess, is that the back rank is then very open for white to play with. So if king king takes would be necessary in that line. But even then, uh, the queens can be traded off with queen c3 and rook d8. And white could just pick up this h2 pawn later on. So uh, David says he doesn't want any of that. Just give me the... the I'll be down the exchange with an attack on your h pawn. And uh, very, these guys find nice intermezzo moves. So it keeps his queen active before needing to defend the knight. And also saying that you can capture over here, but then this pawn falls, which would serve me very well. And I think ideally in this position, uh, black would have liked white to move the knight away so that he can start coordinating with ideas like h3 and stuff. Uh, bishop d6 on the h2 pawn. Maybe uh, this bishop can help 
via f5 as well. But uh, the wolf finds this nice move, queen e4, before anything else, just play queen e4. The queen is currently undefended. We can trade into an endgame, I'm fine with that. Queen f6, David says, this is the only option I have again. And now only the knight moves away. h3, um, considering another queen trade, wow, nice find. And queen e5, rook c1. And the game is actually very interesting takes the pawn so that he can keep pressure along this diagonal later. If g3, then it's game is stuck. So I think that's why that's necessary. Bishop g4. Discovery on the queen. Developing a piece. Uh, currently, the rook is also defended. Very nice, uh, weird harmony. Like, uh, if this was music, it would sound... Uh, it would be harmonic, but it would be two voice counterpart melodies playing alongside each other. Um, making harmonies in the middle, but really just two different melodies and they're congruent on each other, but <laughs> very interesting. And after all of that, uh, the wolf is, may I say, slightly better, but bishop h4, these bishops, he might, the wolf is slightly better, so like, I, I guess, because even though these two bishops uh, seem very active and Nast oh, nasty. So I thought after rook f1, there's bishop e2, but the knight still covers. I think one of the main points is that the two bishops and queen are still slightly, slightly awkward at coordinating an attack over here. And white can defend for a while and use the material. But let's not speak too quickly. Um, David, ah, well, Paul Gluckman is finding some nice ideas here. This is just a fantastic game. Fantastic game. I'm very, very happy about this game. So let's jump back. Akia hasn't played a game. He played one game. And Craig Willenberg against Mr. Peaceful Warrior. Um, don't know who Mr. Peaceful Warrior is, to be honest. These guys are finding nice intermezzo moves. If that is a theme so far from this round, it's intermezzo moves. Before moving the bishop away, losing this pawn, or maybe something else. Just this move. Attacks the rook. Rook needs to move. He can now move the bishop away. Uh, the knight away, I mean. Maybe another tempo move or something. In any case, uh, lupus for men against Nasia. They're down on the clock both. And what were we saying about this game earlier on? Um... I still think it's relatively equal. Um, I probably bef prefer the white side of the position, even though the pawns are doubled. Maybe like rook c1, you can uh, play f3, bishop needs to move, g4, one day. I don't know, it just feels more comfortable for white. Uh, down to a minute on the clock. What is Lupus for Men capable of in terms of Blitz 2248? That is perfectly fine. He should be okay. Stienkamp, what has happened to your game? Playing the, playing up a pawn. Wow. Okay, so this game he he, he played well. This has been an exciting game. Uh, and well, it started becoming. We left the game around about here. G, G3 was the last move we saw. And then only Rook C6. And d6 to get the pawn like this and double the rooks over here attacking the bishop your bishop is being attacked uh, goes for an intermezzo move yet again intermezzo move and retreats the bishop defending these ideas and it became very sharp over here after the trades uh, they came to an end game they played very exciting chess there in the middle game uh, but went into an endgame. Both felt comfortable with the endgame. Supremacy felt maybe he could draw this down a pawn. Sinkum felt maybe I could win this upper pawn. And wow, imagine something like this. This would be mate. But obviously rook e8. Just defending that. At least you know you can play a forceful move like this. Push the rook back. And <laughs> that would have been very cool. You'd need one more piece to kind of pull this off. A knight on 
d6. In any case, I'm liking Steenkamp's chances. Holy Cornholio, our Mr. I am, I think. And how did he do this? How in the hell did he, how did he do this? No, seriously, when we left the game, when we left the game, it looked something like this. Okay. Very drawish. Okay. And in this position, he's up a pawn, but it doesn't feel like the end of the world. Oh, okay. That rook trades wasn't a good idea by the sneaky weasel. And this is definitely an IM playing a rook pawn endgame. The technique, rook behind the pawn after all of those checks. King's active. Just keep the rook behind the pawn. No checking this king. Pawn behind the king. And Holy Cornholio is going to take another win. And this time from the Sneaky Weasel. Matt Pond versus his friend Dabru. This game we left uh, round about... I think round about, yeah, round about Queen C5. And it looked like there could be a repetition. But then Roberto said, no, let's play for the money. Knight E6. Cool. And be careful, he didn't walk into any forks. Uh, instead, <laughs> Rabat is running his king back to the center. So, try and get his attack going. And their position, now after everything has been done, looks like this. And Matpon might just pick up that knight now. Oh, he can't even. There's this uh, sneaky little move. Maybe this pawn is hanging. Who knows? These, uh, but then this is hanging. So, there's there's a weird harmony to this position as well. Matt's not going to go for that yet. He's just going to move a rook or something. Now he goes to the pawn. Because now there's no attack. But Roberto has found this nice move. And be careful now. Okay, all of these games are coming to exciting conclusions. And what to do. Wasn't easy. Bramos, Bramos, four pawns for a bishop. How did that happen? How did that happen? When did that happen? Okay, so... Uh, in the night he gave a knight away for a few pawns and managed to win more pawns out of that and this is the position we have very exciting going to have an exciting conclusion as well Joseph Moale saying it's rough over here definitely definitely under 20 section Panda and Trophy Master Drew Chess King Mark is still fighting he's got the white pieces an extra pawn I, tricky king pawn endgame to win Probably just the draw, but he might stand a chance. Michael Simpson uh, went down against Devon, who went for that very nice G pawn break uh, or G G4 move earlier on. And the game kind of, oh, nice find. Picking up some material and trading into an end. Oh, another nice tactic says there's no checks. I can go for this. You need to give your queen up for a rook and I'll win this endgame easily. I've got a rook versus a bishop. <laughs> Just give the rook away. Finds another nice forcing way to win. Pawn takes simply g7. Queens, nothing to do about that. Devon finds a devastating win. And, okay, we saw Banele find that nice mating pattern. And Kanya took down Vusi after a long while. I think the time pressure paid off. Um, but definitely, maybe rook h7 was a good move. We uh, have to respect that move. And took him down in a rook versus knight endgame. Knight trapped. The wolf is still struggling against Mr. Floppy Dog. Floppy the dog. The material has equal equalized again. After one of the rooks got trapped. And material equality in an endgame after a very crazy middle game. Floppy the dog down on the clock. But I suspect he, he will not necessarily have to go down because of that. Um, very exciting. Let's go back. What's happening Expedition Zuch still playing against Peace or Warrior. Um, I'm just going to have to run through all of these games to see what's the most exciting. Time out. Who got timed out? Masia flagged Lupus for Men. And Lupus for, Men's, uh, Lupus for Men had quite a lot of time when we got here. I was saying I prefer his position. And F3 was tried. Uh, okay. He got flagged over here. I think uh, this is very awkward. Using a bishop. So the time just ran out. Fell for that. Steenkamp is still going with his extra pawn and time advantage. We left the game around, I don't know, anymore, around here or whatever. <laughs> Opposite side colors, bishops, but upper pawn. 
Ooh, be careful. I think bishop c4 is now necessary. And does that draw the game? Bishop c4 is not necessary. Excuse me. Got a rook check. This is a very technical end game. Stenkom would be winning if the rooks come off. And he manages to win this pawn. Which he can do. And I'm thinking this is what he's trying. If the rooks remained, I'm thinking something like check and check. Recapture with the bishop. Push this pawn through. Get rid of this bishop. Run your king over here. Use your, your light squared bishop. This pawn is actually perfect for a light squared bishop to win the game. So this is Stenkamp's idea. Uh, Holy Cornholio, we said uh, Sneaky Weasel. Yeah, he took down the Sneaky Weasel. We said he would. This is definitely one of the IMs playing either Henry Steele or Daniel Cordry. The way they play that Rook Pawn end game. And a Nachi. What is happening here? This game also just flew after we left it. I think we left it uh, even before this. Okay, so we had rook takes that check by, in, by Matt giving back a rook, but then Roberto decided to give his knight away at some point or some pawns. And he gave it away for the e6, e3 pawn. Which he now needs to defend, and unfortunately this is going to cost Robert to the game. Allowing a fast pawn there, right at the end. You need to play so well against Matt Pond for the whole game. Matt will be converting this game. Knight f3 coming, e1 queen coming. Rook and queen versus three pawns. I think we know what the result will be. The real Frenchie's time is running out of here. Nothing to save. Promos wasn't easy. White resigned. Uh, Kenny Solomon resigned. Oh, they played a casual game. That's why I'm not seeing the rating. Kenny Solomon resigned. He had the bishop. Uh, he had the he had the bishop versus the three pawns, and the three pawns were just too much. C two and nothing to do about these two pawns. Jacob and Guni. Um, Jacob Nguni and Kenny Solomon. Okay, we saw this draw. Keegan Chang and Chess King Mark. Mark has managed to make a queen for a rook. And this is supposed to be a technical draw. But how did he manage to get a queen in that position? Simply h7. What a nice find. He's got a queen. And now needs to convert this. I think he might be able to. Oh, be careful for the stalemate ideas. He needed to run his king away. And that is also a nice find. Okay, how is Mark going to convert this? The theory is to get the rook away from the queen. So you need to back. I don't know if he knows the theory. This is very tricky. Check. Yeah, you need to kind of fork the king and rook to get rid of the rook. And this might be the longest game of the round. So we'll come back to that. Mark trying to win a game where he's got a rook for a queen. So many stalemate ideas. Just be so careful. King Chang is going to have to play this perfectly if he wants to draw. At least for Mark's uh, sake, he's got the easier side of it. And I think the other game still going on is South African Wolf versus Fluffy the Dog. And this game, they've both been playing so well, it's difficult to say been playing the best um, I don't know I think maybe white is slightly better because he's got the fast a pawn black needs to start pushing his pawns as well or he might just get crushed this game has been fantastic game of the round uh, floppy the dog finding a uh, such nice defensive resources against very deep attacking ideas. And just look at this G-Pong go. What is Keith doing? Does he think he's got a mating? What? Does he think he can mate after? 
Oh, be careful of these small moves. Be careful. Oh my word. We're going to see G3. Rook takes. King G7. And you're not getting your G7 check. Oh, this just... This looks like trouble for both sides. Maybe Keith has got it. Knight H1. He must play it. Knight H1. Knight H... Ooh, we're going to see something even sharper. Ooh, what a nice find. <laughs> this game is brilliant. Call me Mr. London, Mr. Muzi in the chat saying my heart, oh, my heart is pounding. Mine too. Can't go G2 yet. Floppy the dog. Looking at the time pressure now, maybe that might uh, be a deciding factor, finally. Um, so tricky, so tricky. Knight D3 check. What does that even do? You need to make a move, Floppy. You need to make a move. <laughs> Time's running out. <laughs> and Rook F2. Does that make a queen? I think Rook F2. Instead of knight here. Sorry. Rook F2. Rook takes G2. The rook can come back behind the pawn. No. Knight here. Rook takes G2. Rook G4. Doesn't work. And black spawn is now suddenly way more advanced than white's. But white has got two pawns, so this is very stressful. Very, very stressful. I think we will conclude this game and we'll see if Mark has managed to win the game. He needs to do so within 50 moves. Okay, so. We've got this check. He doesn't want the check. He's going to maybe just repeat. Okay. Why does this work? I guess so. But you've got knight takes. Ooh, he didn't have time to calculate knight takes. And pawn here. Knight can go back. But. King h1. Running the king to the side of the board. Should still be losing because of the knight. Okay. So, David. Defending a very difficult position over here. And the wolf finally down to under a minute. Has David just blundered? No. The knight's defended. The pawn's moving this way. Great stuff. Okay, G, G2 threatening rook takes. What's the idea? G2 threatening rook takes. And queening. He goes for it. This square is covered for the time being. I think maybe Floppy the Dog has found the win. We need to play knight G1 now. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wolf is going in for a deep think over here. Knight g1 seems like your only option. Okay. Floppy can play rook d, rook d1. Lee Chess will restart in 10 minutes. I hope this message doesn't distract him. He needs to finish this game. If Lee Chess restarts in 10 minutes, I don't know what that means for... It usually doesn't restart for too long, but I don't know what that means for round 3. Okay, you've got knight check and you can pick up a pawn. He's going to go for the material. Knight check, pick up a... Ooh. Knight check, pick up the pawn. Knight check, whatever. Pick up the pawn the knight can't take because of queens. Okay. Go back for that position, Floppy. You got it. Floppy. Your king's not in time. Oh, Shit. <laughs> Oh no, man. Oh no, suddenly White's got the fast pawn. You need to take this pawn sometime. Rook behind. Oh no, how are you? Oh no. Oh my gosh. Floppy goes down. Doesn't. <laughs> Let's not say anything. This guy's been very resourceful so far. Eight seconds. What's the resource? Something like Knight there. Check. Knight, you need to play knight, knight e7, knight e7, knight e Okay, there we go. Queens, check. Eh. 
Still horrible, but you get the rook at least. They might... Okay. Ooh. Yeah, now... Ooh, you need to be so careful where you put your king. Dark square at least. He says there's no forks over here. And floppy resigns. Oh! Black had the game there. I was completely sure of it. Yeah, knight d3 check. Maybe he was scared of king c2. Rook d1 hits the knight. Knight h3. Oh, knight h3 would be a blunder, sorry. But? Rook h7 check first. In any case, uh, definitely not lost in this position. Black, uh, unfortunately, lost. Okay, where is Mr... You can change. Black resigned. Well done. What? Wait. Wait. I was looking at this position incorrectly. Mark had the <laughs> black pieces trying to defend this with stalemate ideas. In the end, uh, yeah. In the end, lost like that. Okay. So Mark went down in this game. Um. He had the knight for all the pawns, so it looks like the, the the pieces versus the pawns didn't do too well in this round. So, well done to Keegan. I really thought maybe uh, Mark had the, <laughs> the queen. Okay, that's the end of round one. Oh, round two. I'll be back in a few to check, uh, well, uh, round three. We'll take like a 10-minute break quickly. Leeches is restarting in seven minutes, so I'm curious as to what uh, what the effect will be on the tournament. In any case, uh, thanks. Thanks for watching round two.